Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're back. Oh, hello. How y'all doing? Hello, hello, hello. What's up, y'all? It's been a while. Took that deep sigh, Chris. Yes, because it's been a while, but it was a good season. It was a phenomenal season. It was a phenomenal season, and and we um, got a chance to do a lot of things that we hadn't done before. Yeah. Shout out Go to everybody places. supporting, like tuning in, tagging in, and stuff. So, yo, we see y'all, man, for real. Facts. The amount of love we've gotten when we go to group rides and events and out of town, oh, out of town, out of town, oh, and man. people just roll up on us and say how much they appreciate the podcast and they watch it. Like, super appreciative of y'all. Yes, super. Sir. You know, so thank you. Many, many thanks. Many thanks. Yeah. Y'all y'all are, y'all y'all are one of the reasons we had to come back. Like, not that we weren't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like we were like, nah, we we gotta, you know, get back on this thing. We yeah. gotta get back. We wanted to make sure we had actual things to talk about, right? It's like when artists, if you're writing something, you you, you gotta be out and about and around to gotta live some content. life to come yeah, back. You gotta to, live yeah. some life to come back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're now we're a different level of writers. We are. The, the club yeah. is in a different space. The brand, Black Watts, is in a different space. It is. It is. You know, is. so there's a lot to talk about. People have come up to us and said, yo, can y'all cover such and such? So yeah, we're we taking can... requests now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we definitely are. We heard you, and thank you for that. Definitely yeah. keep sending DMs on IG, commenting in, on, on, on YouTube. Give us some more ideas if there are things that you want to hear us talk about. In person too, like you see us, or maybe we out at, at events or what have you. If there's something that needs to be discussed, or cycling, like you know, the ins and outs, but even just the community at large, uh, different topics. Like right. we try to cover all that. And if we don't know it, we'll go, we'll find out. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll go get the research. the details in and and, and, and bring back some legitimate resources for y'all. Yeah. We're not just making this shit up as we go. No, you know? definitely. <laughs> you can fact check us definitely. too if you want yes, to. Yes, yes, we do. We do have. I mean, we're our own team. <laughs> But we definitely <laughs> fact check. We, we we do all the legwork to make sure that what we're giving you is as accurate as we can possibly be. And if there's something that we miss, we miss it. It's not because we're trying to mislead you. It's just no. we just missed it. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is more watch. So this is definitely going to be the this is second yes. season. You see, a, you know what I mean? A little different atmosphere that we're sitting up yeah, in right so, now. So, I mean, for all you, you new listeners and watchers, I'm Chris. I'm Chad. I'm Ock. <laughs> you can find me on IG, Chad Bennett. That's it, right? You don't want to do the because I've been it. <laughs> everybody, season, everybody know. Yeah, everybody. It's season two. I'm trying. I'm trying to evolve. You more, know, more gentler. No, yeah, yeah. Nicer. No doubt. On IG, I'm Tron Rides. Tron like the movie T R O N R I D E S. Tron Rides. Yeah, there just we set go. up the Black Watch Cycling IG. That's me. If you yeah. want to talk to I, I mean, you I'm there. You know? He's always there. <laughs> He's always there. So, so, so let's transition to what? How did the season open for us? What did you guys think about our season opener? Because it was a little chilly when we started it. But and I was outside. Yeah. Chad was Surprise. outside. I came outside. Yo, I'm doing a lot better, Mister Snowman, you know? right here. <laughs> Anti Snowman, right here. What? 55. Oh, it's too cold. Too yeah, cold. I had on. Bib shorts, <laughs> you know, for a lot of these cold rides too. I ain't gonna hold you, but our season opener was really dope. Um, for people to come out, I'll be honest, I didn't expect that many people to be on that ride. I, I didn't either, and it was, it just was a great amount of love from the local clubs and and riders here in, in in northern Jersey where we are. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did what forty miles? It was about forty. About 40 yeah, we did miles. the Sterling route. Um, yeah, yeah. Here in New Jersey, there's a nice route that starts at our. Uh, are the our what we call Floods Hill? That's the location. That's, That's where we were founded, and it goes all the way through what we call Wachung Reservation. Mm-hmm. So there's some elevation that takes you through Wachung, and then on the back end of that, near Trek Sterling, which is one of our lovely storefronts, mm-hmm. uh, where Trek resides, um, and then we cut it right back up to Summit, which is the other lovely store that we. You know that we support trek summit so um yeah i think for a lot of people that was an eye opener for them because yeah. it was like that first ride of the season yeah. Yeah. and it was like a temperature check like oh shit i ain't really been on my game right. in the off season i've been off my bike <laughs> there was a lot of oh 
lot of heavy breathing. Mm-hmm. But it's all good though, because I mean, we ended up still having a good ride. Uh, there, you know, it was a little laborious yeah. for, for, for some, some. Of the riders. Yeah. But I'm glad that everybody still put persevered and pushed through and ended up having a good ride. Yeah, I was I was just happy like with the support because uh, you know what it is. It is cold and it is the top of the season. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if everybody either got their own ride in or what have you, but. When we put it together and people came out, that was good. Yo, was we, good we had someone from Atlanta. Yeah. That's true. We, yeah, we had yeah. someone pull up from Atlanta. That was super dope. Yeah. yeah so they were supporting. And they've been supporting since then. So that's a good look, too. I we'll have to make next year's a hammer ride. Well, we probably can have like an A and B or maybe a just different level so we can get after it a little bit. I mean, yeah. just to give you some idea about the route, as Chad described, but a little more detail on the specs. It's about, like you said, about 40 miles and... Just under 2,000 feet of elevation, mm-hmm. 17, 1,800 feet of elevation. Yeah. Um, and it's actually some rollers and uh, a climb. Yeah. yeah, there was there's a there's a nice nice climb in the middle of it mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. that'll take you out if you haven't been training <laughs> in the off yeah. season. And when we do it properly, there's a climb to start. Yeah. Like literally from the starting point, you go... 16th of a mile and then we're boom we're right after it mm-hmm. we're about 300 feet of elevation average grade is about six or seven percent yep and then that's that mid climb yeah and then it's coming back up wyoming Ooh, that which climb is, which coming is about two back. miles it's a two yeah. mile climb up you yeah. already put the work in the wild part is like um i was, I was just hoping like, y'all have, hope everybody's okay but i just think that everybody likes that challenge or enjoys a challenge so at mm-hmm. the end it was like yo that was dope that was a i mean the mm-hmm. route is fire all that to push people or like when we, I think we just push each other. It's mm-hmm. a good look, man. It's, mm-hmm. It turns out to be a good look. Period. Yeah, you just you got to train in the off season. Yeah. But it that. also gives people an opportunity if you don't do any elevation, right? Like the elevation presents a a new element to to yeah to the ride. Yeah, that's that's Jersey, bro. I don't know. Yes. How, we were just talking about you can't escape it, man. You can't escape it. <laughs> it's but, no but way around. It, it's like our gift and a curse, right? Like it's we have the we have that differentiation in our topography that. A lot yeah. of folks just don't have. Yeah, because yeah. it's flat, not 10 miles away. Like, uh, where's um, Piscataway and Plainfield all down there? It's mm-hmm. all flat. Or if mm-hmm. you go towards, like, Princeton and all that. Yeah. Yo, it's so funny because sometimes you can tell, like, people look at your Strava. We need to talk about that, too. <laughs> we will. Um, we people will. look at your Strava and they see your numbers, and they be like, oh, he only doing this or whatever average speed. It's like, no, take into consideration, like, a lot of the climbs will take it out of you. Yeah, it's up, yeah. up here. Yeah. And you also, know? if we're riding with other people, right? Like, a big part of who we are as a club is we try our absolute best to stay together. Yeah. Right? Yep. So, you know, if you if everybody starts at the same time and ends at the same time, then everybody's going to have the same average speed. Right, around the same area. Right? So, that's, yeah. the average speed We're not speed dropping is, anybody, so. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. And the average speed, I think, is, is just a, not a good metric to it's use. It's not given the type of ride yeah right because not every ride is like by yourself where you're trying to ride the fastest ride that you can do or trying to keep a high high pace on the ride you know right and if i choose not to stop my computer at the end of the ride and i still got another like five miles to go home Mm -hmm. you know take it easy like take it easy it's gonna like drop drastically yeah yeah you know what i'm saying so these are group rides anyway like um that we're talking about like mm-hmm. you said if you ride by yourself it is what it is but for instance like we to get into it we we do the the tuesday night uh, yes. rides, the yeah. Wednesday night rides. Uh, yeah let's talk about that because that, that was like a obviously a big part of the season for us yes those beginner rides i love yeah. man i i love everybody just getting into the sport and people that are trying to get better man like those those rides really really fill my heart with joy because Sometimes cycling can be a little douchey. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it can a be little, a little douchey. A little, little, yeah. You know, it can be like some assholes. And, yeah. and it can be very judgmental. And it's just good to be around people who just enjoy the sport. Yeah. Yeah, yeah seeing someone enter the sport and, like, watching them catch that bug is, like... Oh, that's the best feeling ever. That's the best feeling ever. Absolutely. Yeah. We actually feeling. had a couple of those this year. Um, so, Tuesday night we do. Tuesday night watch out of uh, the Summit Trek store. And it's usually, uh, you know, like... It's, for said like people who are just starting out or they're returning to that ride over and over and trying to get that acumen up a little bit and we've caught a lot of people 
returning and wanting to return and just enjoy yeah. the camaraderie as well, but also the learning experience. And um, we've definitely had some individuals that came back and just, like you said, caught the bug. Shout out Kevin, because... Uh, Kevin, Joanne, <laughs> Hibba, yeah. Steve. Hibba, yeah. Hibba for There's sure. a lot of members. Yeah, yeah that. There's a lot. Woo. There's been a lot. I mean, and, and by the way, these rides are constructed in a way so that they build on each other, right? So if you start at the top of the season when we start the ride, it may only be 10 or 12 miles, Yeah. yeah. right? It may only have five or 600 feet of elevation, right? Um, but then after a few weeks, we add more distance, we add more elevation, um, and then we don't add anything else there. We just pick up the pace, mm -hmm. right? So and then we add more distance and more elevation, and then we pick up the pace. So it's a it's it's intentional, so that riders can 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 see their improvement, but also along the way, you know, we can work on things like balance. We can you know it Shifting. becomes very evident when you need to go and get your bike fit. Yes. Because now, right, mm -hmm. you're doing some mm -hmm. different things on your bike. So, yeah, I mean, we work on, like, like Chad said, like shifting gears. Climbing. Climbing. You know. Being comfortable riding in a group together. Like in yes. The, that's not necessarily a, a pace line, but just amongst each other. That's different. Right. Yeah. Yo, it's so crazy. Like, what I noticed with a lot of riders over the season is they forget to breathe. And that's crazy because you're alive, right? So it's <laughs> yeah. like, how are you forgetting to breathe and you're alive? No, but yeah. You know, and so like just taking taking them through the, the proper steps of breathing, especially while climbing, yeah. you know, and just seeing how much faster they went up the hill and they're, they gained confidence, you know, like that was, you know, like it's those small little gems. It is. But, you know, I think the beauty in what our, our Tuesday night Watts and our Wednesday night Watts rides did was we created a safe space. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's no no dumb question. It was like be comfortable asking something that you were unsure of. Like this is the space to do that yes. because in the sport of cycling, there isn't really a safe space, you oh, know. Yeah. It can feel that way. Yeah, it, it can, can feel, totally that, feel way. that way. It, it can, can totally, totally feel, feel that, that way. way. Yeah. You know? It's times for it's time to be competitive. There's definitely definitely rides that we're like, yeah, let's let's get after it. Whether it's amongst ourselves or we go to someplace else, it's times that you want to get competitive. And there's also, like you said, we want to foster that that safe area that you could just yeah, I mean, like I'm not getting judged, but yeah. help me out. Oh, I'm not gearing down or gearing yeah. up correctly. Yeah, help yeah. Me. like That's yo, the like how many times did we have to tell someone like, yo, you know, you can actually like shift yes like you don't have to muscle yeah. through this <laughs> your bike has this thing called mechanical advantage and these gears have a you know purpose to actually right. help improve your experience yeah. on the bike like it's okay you had no idea what your small chain ring was for or or that it existed you so know? many people who have shimano i've found never use the left side of their gearing which changes the big into small chain ring right they only go up and down the cassette on the right side mm -hmm. it was like oh like a big light bulb goes off and they're like wow this yeah. is so much easier and we're like yeah yeah that just tells <laughs> like, me like yeah. people yeah either you, i don't know maybe you just didn't even know to ask that question which i'm glad they did like you know yeah. if they came on a ride with us and they we pointed that out or they figured it out or some kind of way but that's Period. Good look. Now, cycling for you is way more enjoyable now. Yes. Like way yes. more enjoyable. So, People yes. just truly think that the sh like the shifters are just for brakes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just you know? Yes. Yeah. Uh, like they have no idea that you can actually go in and mm -hmm. use both paddles if you're on Shimano. Yep. Like yep. they have no idea. Yep. yep. And that's that's. I'll be honest. That's the part that I enjoy is like giving someone that aha moment. You know. And what's cool is we have the, the good benefit of being so close to New York City that it, it, it's it's irrespective of geography. Yeah, you can right. see the difference, right? So when we right? do our Wednesday yep. rides in Central Park, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's the same beginners thing. Beginners everywhere kind of do this. And by the way, when I say beginners, I don't mean fitness all the time, right? Because there right. can be people that are actually fit, but they are beginners to the sport of cycling. Right. Yeah. You know? Yep. Absolutely. It, yeah, it's geography does not matter. I think the the interesting part about New York City is a lot of the folks that come out for those rides are scared of the streets of New yes. York City, yes. if anything. And yes. so they're looking for a safe place to enjoy this, the sport of cycling, period. Mm -hmm. Yo, that's a legitimate concern. <laughs> what? It is. You know what I'm saying? Like if it you is. if you <laughs> if you really just thought you were just gonna hop out on 
some main thoroughfare and get busy. You can, but it's a lot. It's a little I mean, sketchy. It's a little even sketchy. With the, even with the bike lanes. With the bike lanes. Uh, those guys, they're coming in both directions, especially the dudes on electric joints. Like mm-hmm. the They're almost guys. as fast as cars. Like yes. It, in the swinging doors. And now they have the, the parking right next to the bike lane. Yeah. So they open their doors yeah. into the bike lane. Or the restaurants oh, that yes, are on the, the street. The restaurant seating because of COVID. Yeah. So there's a lot of variables. New York City riding is is Frogger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Frogger. It's different, man. It's Frogger. So, yeah. So we offered that. that uh, It wasn't necessarily f- just for beginners, but a lot of people who, um, like you said, had concerns about the, the, the street traffic and all that. So yeah. we, we offered that ride up in Central Park, which in and of itself was, you know I mean, that wasn't just like la di da. It was it was people on city bikes, yeah, the horses, pedestrians, horses, yes. the horse joggers, shits. like yeah. So you would you were dodging a lot of <laughs> things. <laughs> Legitimately in Frogger, bro. Like, yeah, you're really like, hey, dad, dodge left. But you know what though? But that also fast forwards a little bit, like some of the riding etiquette things, like how to signal when you're pace lining. Because yeah. we really worked on pace lining. On in both on both Tuesday mm-hmm. and Wednesday night, um, and I would say on Wednesday you really have to really use your hand signals way more than you do on our on our route in, uh, in New Jersey. Don't you ever the runners too? Yeah. And the beauty about both rides is it's not just for like beginners. Like you you could be an experienced rider and still mm-hmm. enjoy Tuesday and Wednesday night watch. Just Absolutely. Because we, we put something in there for you. Yeah, yeah. We we have a little spicy section. You know, like all of our rides start out very camaraderie based pace Mm -hmm. um, where you kind of want to get to know the people you're riding with. And then it it changes. And if you want to hammer it, go do your thing. We're meeting right back here after lap two. Yep. Yep. You know, and that's in both places. So there's a there's a little bit of flavor for everybody on our rides. Yeah, for sure. You know, so we did Tuesday night watts. We did Wednesday night watts. Shucks. And then we would do. Uh, a Saturday where we, it'd be definitely more of an up tempo kind of ride. Yeah. And Sunday is our straight out coffee ride. Coffee ride. Yep. We're taking it super easy. Um, and that we have our, like we talked about last season, which was Montclair. Mm-hmm. We ride yep. from where we start off. Floods is in South Orange and we go to Montclair. Round the back is about a 20 mile ride. Yeah. So it's cool. We want to, we want to, we would like to get more people on that as far as, I mean, we have our club members obviously, but just people that, that we that we converse with in different clubs, because mm-hmm. um, you know we we jumped out on other clubs openers and, and oh rides yeah for the years. trendsetters well, yeah. we, yes we did trendsetters KRT QRT so we went down to to Philly yep. and if you watched last season that's when we shot the episode at the tricycle shop yes we yeah. did that was our last episode. Right before the last episode. Yep. Right before the last yep. episode. Yep. Shout out to Psycho Michael and the Psycho whole tricycle Mike. crew. Yep. Um, but Super that was spot. a really dope ride. Yeah. That was a that was a really fun ride. That was fifty miles, three thousand feet yeah, of elevation. About three thousand feet of elevation. But it, you know what was so crazy? It didn't feel like it because it was a bunch of rollers. And I it think was. that's the difference between New Jersey and like PA and maybe some other places. Is that like? 4,000 feet elevation in New Jersey, 3,000 is a, like, you're hitting it. Yeah. You're climbing, climbing. Yeah. I mean, I think the only place that's different would be, like, West Coast Cali. LA. Right. Yeah. Or maybe in, like, whole, Colorado when you're right. really, like, mountains, bro. going up right. mountains, yeah. right? Yeah. But, like, the rolling hills, 3,000 is, I'm not saying it's easy no, by it's any not. means, but, it's like, not. it's 3,000 feet, it's 3,000 feet. Mm-hmm. But, like, when it's rolling hills, you kind of... Get that reprieve because mm-hmm. you go down, you, you go, go down, you go, go up. up. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. But KRT, they was getting after it on that one. Oh, there, right? oh yeah, <laughs> I got. I had no idea. I came out with full intent to just finish it. Right. You know. Um, after it, but they were they were hitting. It, but it's, it's their hood, yes. you know. Yeah. So like, uh, shout out to them, man, because that, that they put together a good experience that weekend. I mean, I think it was. Friday, they did like a tour of Philly, if you will. Mm. Ah, I missed that, man. Sites. Yeah. Uh, went over the bridge into Camden and did some things there. Um, and then Saturday was their main event where, um, like you said, 50 miles, 3,000 feet of elevation, you know, good rest point, good, you know, SAG support. And that's what I needed the SAG support. <laughs> I needed the SAG support. 
I wasn't gonna mention it. Oh yeah, we can mention it because I got All COVID. Right. I had well, I had COVID before, but I didn't know I had COVID. <laughs> oh man, did I have it before? I, I really I think, don't know. I think you had it before. Yeah, yes. bro, but it must have came into full power there. Yeah, because that was the hottest day of the season so far, right? I think we hit triple digits for the first time. Yo, it was like eighty nine. Mm-hmm. It was like eighty nine. Like, it seemed like it just shot up. It though. shot up. Yeah, it got hot real quick. And then I was just like, yo, like. I can't move my legs faster than this. I, I knew something was wrong with you um, at the at the like 27, 28 yeah. mile mark. Yeah. I was, I was like, trying though. I was you were trying. trying. Yo, shout out to Taisha. Oh, yeah. She rolled back with me. Chad was like, Taisha, you got him? I was like, yeah, we did. Yeah. Chad was gone. He was like, bro, you're going like eight miles an hour right now. We, only like, we got like 20 something more miles to go. So yeah, she rolled back with me, man. She stopped with me at the CVS. Bro, that, there was, that was a, that whole... After the twenties, like when we made that, when everyone did the stop the and like stop. Yeah. refueled, it just got like interesting. Oh, it was yeah. an adventure after that. Yes. Um, I'm not sure what the young lady's name was, and I, I really hope she's okay. But she got hit by a car. Oh yeah. So there was. Um, they had the sack sport, the shorty in the um in the jeep. She was helping out, but they took her. They the ambulance came in. Yeah. They took her, EMS took her away. Um, but yeah, Chris was. Me and Chad was like, yo, where is he? We waited on him. <laughs> yo, because I had just passed Chris, like, yo. not even five miles before I ran into you. Yes. And I'm like, yo. On the whole, like, for the last 20 joints, I'm riding yo. on a half a flat tire, yo. bro. I, I had a hot. flat. He was hot. So if you saw Ak at any point towards the latter part of this ride, he was standing the whole ride. Because yeah. if he sat, he was, <laughs> was on his rim. Yeah, I was riding on the rim. I was, yo. <laughs> The, um, but Dunny was still trying to get it in with, yeah. the, with the front group, though. Nah, the flat they, tire and everything. They um, they had a not a necessarily an A group, but just whoever wanted to get after it on the on that Philly ride was they were going. And I mean, you know, I mean, I'm in the top. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm up here. I'm thinking I'm gonna finish. I look back, like, damn, that was ruined, bro. That was my dream. Yeah, I mean, it was ruined. And then I, I ended up leaving Aqua a little <laughs> like, bit too. Nah, because the, the last like it was just the hills on the last bit. I just I stood up and coasted. It was I could hear it rumbling like, right. yo, I'm not trying to ruin this piece. Yo, yeah. I think I'm the only one that had a yeah, good experience all the way through. <laughs> yo, you and Taisha. Yeah, Taisha was good. She she was really good. She was really good. Yo, but she rode fun. with me back all the way, bro. She was like, "You need me to push you?" I was like, "Nah, I don't need to push. <laughs> I'm okay. I just gotta take it slow." Yo. No promo, but I'm not gonna lie. The salt stick. Oh yeah. The salt that stick was, was. Oh, you like just leaking all kind of sweat like yeah to try to put that back. Yeah, the salt stick was super clutch. I mean, if you're if you're watching this salt stick. Anyone <laughs> that's affiliated with salt stick, please Come reach out at us. Yeah, to us. Um, at info at blackwatch.cc. <laughs> cc. But that was super clutch once the heat started to pick up, and I was like, yo. Cause you you saw me, mm-hmm. you you, you were ahead, one. you were ahead, yeah. and no, Taisha gave us one. Oh yeah, Taisha did. She did. Yeah. She did. So she you sure were did. ahead. Mm-hmm. I pulled up on you, and I was like, "Yo, Chris don't look good." Nah, bro, I was and so hurt. Yo, son. That was I was pouring my water good. bottle on me, bro. I was yo, hurt. it was hot, but that I was like, "Shoot, Chris, stop! I'm about to stop because <laughs> yo, the heat started to kick in." Good, Taisha gave us one, mm-hmm. and literally when like. Minutes, I was like, "Oh, I feel, I'm feel, I feel yeah. good." Yeah, it was Chad 2.0. <laughs> he was like, "Y'all good?" All right. yeah. <laughs> and I started to hit it again. Um, but yeah, that salt stick came in clutch, man. Yeah, you because retain it, the water, so like you just you, instead of sweating it all out and just being on a dehydrated level, like you would just retain that. So you keep dumping water, you good. Yeah, yeah. You feel it right away. Those electrolytes, man. Like, you know, that's one of the big things, right? It's not just having actual h2o you know what i mean like mm-hmm. you have to have electrolytes oh you. you'll just it'll just come right out yes, it'll, it'll, once yeah. once they're gone they're gone yeah. like they're not coming back until you replenish them yep. your yep. body recycles them which is much later yeah yeah and that's the thing about for me personally that i'm still learning is like when to replenish yeah like you really have to watch the clock because even though you're not you're you're, you're saying to yourself yo i feel good i'm not thirsty like you still have to drink and eat every hour. Every yo, say it again. Every hour, bro. Every like, hour. Eat something, drink something. Like, yeah. yeah, you just can't sip. Don't yeah. sip. You really have to kind of like in an hour go through a little bit of your water bottle. Yeah, yeah. It's an endurance sport, especially people that's transitioning from like ball sports, right? Like football, soccer, even tennis, right? Like 
because I think runners may get it more like the the long the runners that do half marathons mm-hmm. or marathons yeah. they get it, but a fifty mile ride. Once you start, you start. You're in it. Yeah. This, you know what I mean. There's no break. There's no ad time or you know what I mean. There's no. Yeah. Time. <laughs> There's really no, no ad time. time. No. There are no quarters. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, because those 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 sports you speak of, like football, is hard right now. Like it's intense right now, mm-hmm. and then you stop, and then you break or whatever. But like cycling you'll find yourself you think you're good then all of a sudden in a snap it's like yeah you went over like 30 miles all your, your body's done yes and it's yeah. like how am i going to get this back it's too late bro you didn't yeah Once <laughs> it's gone. what you were supposed to do yes, yes. yeah snap yeah it, bro. especially if you're new to the sport you really have to pace yourself i mean i know when my body about to go <laughs> flop <laughs> i've reached my limit I yeah. found it out in, in Philly. Yeah. Shout out to QRT and KRT. Thank you for allowing me to find my limit. Yeah, but you know how to prep for that ride yes. come next year. Yes. You know, like there's still a lot of things that we're learning um, with the sport. And that's why we want to, as we learn, we want to share that information with you. But I think we all learned some, something from that. Oh, yeah. From we'll that talk, ride. Like, after that, I mean, once I got through COVID, I, um, I, I, it changed everything. Like I legitimately was like, all right, cool. This is what I'm bringing with me on every ride. Whether I can, like if it's a 20 mile ride, I'm still bringing like this, you know, this type of nutrition. Mm. I'm still having in my bottle, like, you know, my, my electrolytes. I'm still bringing the salt stick with me. I'm still bringing the goo with me because maybe I don't need it, but maybe someone else on yeah. the ride. Right. Always, always. It, yeah. You know, yeah. Like it, it stays with me. Like, you know, like your, like your spare tubes and everything. Right. Yeah. My yeah. lesson learned for the year was, you don't drink that gallon of water the, the day or two days before. Oh, I don't yeah, care so, what you talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you trying to sip on the ride like that's good. You need right. it, but it ain't, ain't in you. Deficit, so. <laughs> it, it ain't, ain't in you. you. <laughs> and that meal the night before is clutch mm-hmm. too. You know, like something like pasta. Yeah, carved up. Carb carb up that that yeah. that meal before, man. Because and you, you try to go into that ride not. <laughs> Trying to fast before a, a really hard ride. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, that's tough. You I mean, know? just in general, right? I mean, we'll, I mean, we'll probably talk about this at another time. But like cycling, like going on a hard ride is not the time to be like feeling like I'm about to try to lose some weight. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like your body is like, yo, like I, I need to survive. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm, yeah. You know, like you know, like I, I think that. Come, especially folks that come from other sports, like for example, boxers. I know old school. I mean, it probably doesn't happen now. They used to have those sauna suits. Mm-hmm. Oh, know? wrestling is yeah, yeah, yeah. wrestling. Yeah. Is, you know, and all, you know, like where you would basically try to get all rid of all your water weight to make a weight you know requirement. Yeah, it's not the case in cycling. And I know the vast majority of cyclists that you see on television are really small humans. They small. are <laughs> They're right. just small humans. Small right, beings. right. But the rest of us are normal humans, right? And as a result of us being normal humans, you know, like we still need to, I mean, we can have weight goals and body yeah. image goals and all that, but when you're actively engaged in the sport and you're on that ride, yeah. you gotta just take care of your body to get back home. Yep, thousand percent. I mean, can we talk, can we Can we move on now? Yes. To our our, our major event. Black Watch Day. Black Watch Black Day. Watch Day. <laughs> oh, it was so great. Listen, yeah, had a great so time. listen, man, I don't even know, like, where to begin. Well, pre- previously, we, uh, last year, the first, last two years, we had it on Father's Day, um, and we switched it up and had it on the, uh, that Saturday, the day before, and um, we, we, we started off, obviously, in, in, in one domain, but as of right now, like, we want everybody to come through and enjoy what we're giving and, and and what the the community has to offer whether you're it, we are black fathers obviously girl dads all that but if you're not come through if you're, if you're loved one, all inclusive through, the ladies please do so um today is that day is different it's black watch day like we want everybody to come yeah. and enjoy that so that's what yeah. that's the the difference but it's it's still the same feel baby yeah yes. same feel we just wanted to shift well we made it, we, we shifted for a couple of reasons one uh, we had a presence at Harlem Scri- Skyscraper, which is uh, that Sunday of Father's Day weekend. Um, <clears throat> but also, you know, like we had some heavy hitters come through. <laughs> yeah, of course. We had Legion of Los Angeles pull up. Yes. Miami Blazers pulled up. Yes. 
SRAM was phenomenal. Lead car support. Trek was a phenomenal. SAG van support. We had Scratch there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Competitive Cyclist. Competitive, Competitive Cyclist. Cyclist was yeah. there. Yeah. You know, Rafa supported us. Yep. Yep. Rafa, shout out Rafa New York. You know, so it was just, we had bouncy houses, face painting, ice cones, burritos. Mm-hmm. We had, a, you know, thank you, for, thank you for everyone that pulled up and bought some of this lovely <laughs> black yeah. wants well, apparel yeah, you know um but that like that event for us is what got us into the sport of cycling and so some people were like oh well i want i want it to be a faster ride you know it's like well we might solve for that next year but this year it's about family you know like getting everyone to experience what we experienced, which was like the camaraderie piece and riding together, you know, so it's a social ride, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and you know, like we even had yoga, like, yeah, we, you know, like we, we had everybody. something for, for everybody, you know, and it, we, I mean, Chad mentioned the bounce houses, but you know, the kids really got into it. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. People were asking about doing a kid's ride too. Yeah, we'll figure that we'll out. We'll try to figure that one out. Yeah, we'll try to figure that out because like, a lot of people ask. Yeah, and maybe yeah. it'll be more of a family ride than like a yeah. pure, pure kids ride. But we'll figure it out, though. Yeah. Um, but uh, that was a phenomenal day for us because we got to do the Black Watch Day event. And then we left there. We had a full day. Oh, my day. gosh. Yes, we had a full day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. I did, I did. <laughs> we I left forgot. there, went straight to Rafa. Yeah. Yep. To host a Q&A for Legion and the release of their new, their movie project or video project. Yep. Right? Yep. Uh, we were also there hosting for a chat around the Blazers. Yeah, because Miami project. Blazers just launched yeah, this yeah. year. So yep. uh, we had an opportunity to host uh, both both teams and take some questions, ask some questions, get some great answers, get to know both uh Legion, men's legion and women's legion mm-hmm. team. Yeah, so, teams. So, yeah, that was dope, man. The audience participation was great. Everybody, they loved them. It was yeah. love them so deep yeah. in there. Yeah. Yes, it was. It was oh I, my god! I, so I don't know. Personally, I've never seen Raph of that crowded yeah, ever. No, no, people really come out and show love for not only that team, but I think that aspect of the sport. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it. I mean, they are who they are. Shout out Justin, Corey, CJ. Like they're just. It's Legion, so they, they are what they are. But I right. just think they just represent what all of us are, are have found and, and started to love over the last two, three years or what have you. Yeah. Uh, and that that's just a, a beautiful thing. So we I, I think we all try to support in, in that type of way. But that day, <laughs> we had our day, went over there to uh, to host that. And, and then we just kept going because the yeah. next day was... Oh, yeah. So. Oh shoot! They launched a bike, but guess what? Who else <laughs> launched a bike that day? Yes, yes. Legion did launch a bike in collaboration with Packer. Packer, Packer yeah. yeah. Packer shoes, yeah. Yep. Shout out to Mike Packer, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was. It's. They basically did. A, they did their thing on the. Uh, they basically took the the Venge, the old Venge that Specialized used mm-hmm. to do, and they added uh, the the core. All the core elements of the regular Legion bike with the graffiti and yep. that sort of thing, and they added a little Packer twist to it. So, yeah, yeah, it was it was a dope project. Yeah, yeah. but we're stuff. talking about projects. We're talking about projects. <laughs> we're gonna talk about I projects. I mean, I think uh, our project was a little hotter. Project you know, lots, might be man. a little biased. Yes, but, uh, I am totally biased. I, I will <laughs> say it. I am totally project biased. Project Watts, man. Project Watts. Oh my gosh, yo, people really thought that we like went somewhere and got that bike like custom painted somewhere. So, like, to see their faces when it was like, no, 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 no. This is a legit. Yes. Like, paint job from Trek. Yes. They're like, huh? Oh, actual full collaboration with Trek. Full right? collaboration. We are not a race team. Yeah, right? full We're collaboration. Not We're not a race team. This Shout isn't... out to Trek for believing in our mission and, yeah. and everything that we're doing and providing us the type of support um, that you just don't see every day. Yeah. You know? Like, you just don't see other brands providing that level of support behind uh, a club yeah behind a club yeah you know what i'm saying saying. like they believe in what we're doing in our mission which is super dope Mm -hmm. um and they allowed us to go through that process which i'm not gonna lie i was my anxiety was high as hell (laughs) bro but but they allowed us to dig in the crates because our color is from way back in the 80s 
Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, show, it's a yeah. throwback. Yeah. It's a yeah. throwback color. Yeah. It is. Like, you can't find that. Yeah. Because how it's the process started, no man, how the process started, we, we were trying to go with something that was a little more, like, recent in paint schemes. And uh, it just wasn't hitting the the same way this no, color it is. It wasn't. Um, with the design, yeah. you know. Um, so as we went through that process and we started to look through the archives of some some of the older paint schemes that they did for some of the racers, it was like, wait, time out, go back, wait. Did just this? It? Right, right, <laughs> did you, did you see right, right. And so. Um, what we wanted to do was just like make sure we didn't kind of like follow the scheme of like I talk about this a lot. Like everyone thinks because we're called Black Watts, everything we do is black. Yeah, you know, like I didn't want a black bike. Mm -hmm. No, I wanted have one black kit. That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> we only got one black kit. So like I wanted something that was sort of like spoke to who we were. Um, and when we saw that that color, it was um. It was nickel, nickel plate. Yeah. Yeah, and nickel it has a plate. Gun it's the cool thing about it was we we were able to use that and go across the spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. Because we were able to get something a little more chromey around the nickel and then something that was a little more gun metal. Yeah. Yep, right? That's exactly what it was, gun metal. Yeah, yeah you know? gun metal. Yeah, not nickel plate, gun metal. Yeah, so we were able to run that whole gamut and use it throughout. Yeah. While at the same time, using some of the natural carbon color. Yeah. Right? Like, yep. so... It's dope. Yo, and what's so interesting about our bike is it feels much lighter than, like... A typical Imanda? A typical Because the, the Project yeah. Watts bike is an Imanda SLR. Yes. Uh, the group set determines whether it's a 7 or 8 or a 9. All right. of ours just happens to be a 9. Um, but it's the Imanda SLR frame. Yeah, and I thought... I, when I said, hey, can we do project watts on the side he was like sure i was like oh my gosh yeah. we're calling it project watts yes as the official project watts and the part of the the research um when we were looking at other other brands that did paint schemes and custom bikes is everything was like super flashy mm -hmm. or it was dialed down and i know we talked about wanting something that was kind of like you, you had to get up close to understand the yeah. details, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah, there's a lot that goes into it uh, mm -hmm. as far as those details are concerned. I mean, there's, there's, there's axioms across the bike that, that we believe in um, mm -hmm. and it makes, that makes it a lot more special uh, in those terms. But I, I mean, we, we talked about this, like, are we, are we going to try to let the people get a hold of that? Now nah, we're gonna hold off on that. Hold off on that. <laughs> Let's hold off on that. We got we got we got some more. It's still cooking in the kitchen. No taste testing. You, you, you get it when it's ready. That'll be ready. dope though. That'll be. that'll be dope. We'll it we'll be. we'll get back to you on that. Yeah. Um, I mean, but you know something else I, lo I love about the project is that there are tons of Trekkie Mondas. You know, like you know, like when you travel, you're riding around, you see a lot of Trekkie Mondas, but seeing our project next to a standard color yeah it looks like a totally different bike and it just shows the the power of detail right like chad is the designer like he educates me in in, in small ways you know just about every time we talk about the design process of things but i've always had this attention to detail around things around clothing and little things like that but it it, it matters across the board and across the board across the board yeah like, our bike just Hits different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm. I'm not gonna hold you. I. I haven't seen a bike out yet that kind of made me say like, "Damn, I got to go back to the drawing yeah, board." Yeah, no, no, no. And 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 Legion's bike is tight. It's dope. It's dope. Just don't look like our it bike. Ain't ours. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I mean, like I said, I'm biased, but I mean, put us head to head. Put us head to head in terms we of can the start quality from of the scratch. Project. Yeah, the quality you know, of the project. I'm ready to you know? compete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but even when you look at, I mean, and I think. Not only for Trek, but I think some of the other cycling brand, cycling big cycling brands, the colorways that they use typically for the race teams, they're not really stepping outside the box, right? It's like when you go buy a car, it's white, it's gray, yeah, it's black, and maybe there's some color of the time, like champagne. Remember when champagne was a car color? Oh man, the cars did not age well. Or that no. that uh, <laughs> no. that purple that CLK four thirty. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So I mean, and I think that the cool that was, thing that about was a, that was a big the whole timeless part. Um, part yes. of it. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the, that yeah. was the biggest yeah. piece that we yeah. were kind of like that that hurdle we were trying to get over was like making sure like yo because we don't know if we'll get another shot at this. Right. That's know? correct. It was like yo, let, if we're gonna correct. ride this bike 
to the wheels fall off. I don't want it to be 10 years and this bike looks wild. Heck, not <laughs> even 10 years, but like next year. Next yeah, year. next year. Right? It looks wild. You know? And and cuz if you if you think about it, if you go buy a bike just straight off the rack, whether that's off the website or you walk into a store, you're only getting the colors that are there. Yeah. For that region. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So and you can't just go paint your bike because that voids the warranty. Yeah. Right? yeah. So you're really in the pickle. So I'm just saying that to say you ain't trying to see us. I mean, talk to us nice. <laughs> I'm talk like to that. Us nice. I'm like that. If you want to see pictures of <laughs> we have some great high res photos of well, compress maybe because it's on IG. But if you check out our IG, Black Watt Cycling, you'll see uh the bike there. You yeah, if you want the design page, smoke, you know, like I'm definitely give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah my man gets busy, man. He's he chefs it up. He, he gets busy. He gets busy. He I got does. more in the tuck. He does. And all I do is I add like the little that 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 uh that 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 background song, that background sound that you hear in major songs, that's me. You the ad libs? Yeah, that? yeah. You know I'm saying that's me. I, I'm, I'm the ad libs in the major songs. When you like, yo, the song, but it's that ad lib that everybody talking about. That's yeah, true. and that's that. That's our lightning blue, bro. That lightning blue, you gotta so. have it. Gotta have it. Yeah, the lightning blue, the quotes. Mm-hmm. Uh, keep pedaling. It's so funny. I looked at it. I looked at it last night, and I was like, "Yo, nowhere on on our bike does it say keep drafting." Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it does not say keep drafting. It's it. me out of time or two, bro. I'm gonna let you know that. Yeah. Like, on, like obviously, solo. Where I'm trying to get after or whatever, like climbing sky top or something like that. Like you look down naturally. You look down. It's right there. Yep. Like, keep, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I, I tell one of our new members to keep pedaling, and what do you say? He was on one of the rides. He nah, was like, he told me that. He was like, nah, Chad told me I got to keep pedaling. Like, <laughs> Shout out to Steve. Yeah. That's real. <laughs> Shout That's out to Steve. Yeah, but that was a successful project. We took that project. Uh, it took us, what, two months? Yeah. 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 We. I mean, we we spun it really quickly. Yeah, that We're was kind of quick. against the gun, but. We spun it really quickly, yeah. but shout out to 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 the Trek design team, right? Who yeah. were just like, like the execution, just, yeah, and they just gave us a full palette, right? Mm. There were no limitations placed None. on what we could do. Yeah, they were super helpful um, with their feedback and just their ideas, and I would say that even their how well they received our ideas. Yeah, yeah, like it was, it was because you know, like it was a new canvas. Mm-hmm. You know, like you design things and you're always used to a certain canvas and designing for a bike is very different than like designing for a shirt or a kit. Mm -hmm. So space here. Yeah, you got all this space and you may have an idea of how you want your frame, your bike frame to look. But once you design it, you say like, wait a minute, this does not look good. No, it has curves. Yeah. So many curves. Yeah. And, you know, like there's a lot of like pressure to be the only like quote unquote designer out of us. And so for me, I wanted to make sure Chris and Ock were like part of the process. And we went through and like, I mean, I had my little iPad joint, you know what I mean? We printed out on paper. We did. We went old school coloring pencils. I got my baby's coloring pencils out. It was like, (laughs) Wife yeah. looking at me like, are you serious? Right, right. right. Like, nah, listen, this is, this is important. Yeah. Try. Yeah. I'm so, do my little art project. Like, that was the thing is, like, I didn't want to feel like I was taking over the process. Yeah. No. I mean, you it know? was very collaborative. It was, I yeah. mean, the, each of us has our hands on that. For um, sure. And I just want you to that's get, important. I want you to. To do that for for next year though, <laughs> for some for some race bikes from for me and Chris. That's you know what's man? up. We, that's we what's try up. to enter we try to enter that realm this year. That was oh, really that's right. Race. Yeah. So I was supposed to. I did a Zwift race. Does that count? Does that count? All right. That counts. I got third in the so Zwift race. So I um did Harlem skyscraper. Yeah. And uh, it was the day after Black Watts Day. I practiced for it. You know, did, did some training kind of lead up to it. Uh, but the level of anxiety and anticipation I hadn't felt. For like twenty years, like, Yo. you know what I mean? Like I'm old. Different. Chris was kind of annoying that that morning. He, he had everything had to be correct. Well, that's yeah. just him. Everything yeah. had yeah. to be right. No, bro, it had to be right, bro. I felt too like yeah, that's, that's yeah. Real. Chris's level right. of anxiety, bro, that morning. because I was like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, like, oh, did I eat right? Did I did I, did I drink enough? And I was like, Yo, it's only half an hour. Yeah, the race is only a half an hour, bro. 
So right. It, it, it doesn't feel like Looking that. back on it, yeah. that's nothing. Yeah, that was yo, nothing. I found the new level of respect for cats who do it. Like, yo, just sidebar. We talked about um, different places we went and um, uh, different races or events. And intelligentsia is uh, happening in Chicago. And that's over some days. We call yeah. it three or four, but I think it's like 11. Yeah. In fact. And after uh, I did um, Grant's Tomb, it was, it was tough. But I'm just thinking about... These guys do races day after day after day after day. So I just got a, a new level of respect for them after just entering that world real quick. I, I we plan on I mean hitting that again next year. Shout out uh Chris Bourne on our team. Like yeah. that boy's a beast. So mm -hmm. you know Shout out to Chris. Talk about what bikes y'all y'all were on for those races. So I gotta let you leave. Because yeah. yours actually even though my race was before yours, your story is actually funnier. No, I see see, all right. So we were talking about the Project Watch on oh, bike. And it's an Amanda, so it's it's beautiful, it's light. We all had trepidations about the bike, period. Not not the project bike, but just the bike in general, um, compared to what we were riding on. So <laughs> once I got a hold of it, I was like, oh, this, this is all right. This is all right, right, right. Like, like, I had the same look, like, yo, okay. this is all right. And Chad sitting over in the corner like I told y'all. <laughs> yeah, Stop I mean, doubting me, y son. <laughs> Stop doubting me. I told you I had nothing to worry about. But I just started, like, once I picked it up, then I just started, I'm running with it. I'm going... Training, regular rides, everything, and um, and I, my bike, my normal bike, the one that I was just running, is a Madone, and um, it's, it's a lot heavier. Like, it's all right, a lot heavier. so, it's a lot heavier, so. You, gotta, you gotta really talk to the people about your setup, though. You know, like, that's super important. Talk about your setup on the Madone, like, wheel set, group set. Yeah, well, so the Madone, I, I think all in all, it's like 17 or 18 pounds, probably higher, uh, heavier than that. Um, but I, on that one, I had force as far as the group set and uh, the Bond Traegers, the 50s on there. So it was pretty heavy. But I, if anybody owns it or owns an aero bike, that thing is amazingly yes, fast. Like is. once you get up to speed, it's, it's ridiculous. And comfortable. Yeah. And it's fast and comfortable. It's super comfortable. So it's it's just a different ride. So in my head, that's what I'm there with it with, with as far as the race. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> But I'm practicing and training on the Amanda, which is super light the whole time. And when I when I got out there to Grant's Tomb, it was immediately, as soon as I started, I was like, oh, I think I made a mistake. Because <laughs> there's really two climbs. Yeah. There's yeah. two crazy climbs back out there. Back, right, and it's like that with these punchy ones, too. Yeah, right? yeah. you so know? It was a different run. But courses I, I mean, for courses. The, just the respect level for those cats, like for everybody that, that gets after it. Um, I mean, we're going we're gonna to keep going. I'm, I'm playing on... As far as training, I'm wild in this all season. Yeah. I'm gonna try to I mean, get after it for next year and, and put in as much as I can. Yeah, same here, same here. I think yeah. same for me. Like, so I, I raised Mama Dawn. Yeah. And I love Mama Dawn. Mama Dawn, her name was Athena. Oh, wait, did you just say was? I just want to make sure I heard yeah, that properly. That was was. I, I, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we broke up. Aww. <laughs> She's in a happy home right now. I got a new happy home, so it's all it's all good. But I realized, um, and this is about my bike journey, and Chad, Chad's a little bit further along in his bike journey, I think it's safe to say, than Ak and I have been. Because uh, Ak and I love the Madone, right? It was super comfortable. Like he said, like it holds speed. Once you get there, it's just it just rolls. Mm -hmm. But the type of athlete I am, I think, and like I said, I shout out to Chad for this, because the type of athlete I am and how it translates to who I am as a rider they coincide like the way our, I would run a 5K, the way I would play football, the way I would play basketball, soccer, and ride bikes. It's still, they all have those same elements, but I never even thought about that before. So the so the Madone, while I love her and how it rides, the Amanda with this weight differential, because my Madone was probably, so I had a triple X6s on mine, which is a 60 depth wheel, but they're pretty heavy. They're like, you know, 16, 1700 grams. Um, and I had red, red Grupo on it. So it was, you know, it was kitted out nicely, but my bike was like 19 pounds or something like that. And I remember I used to have conversations with Chad Knock, like, bro, you're not get, you can do whatever you want to do. You're lighter. not getting, how much lighter you going to get? You already have all the lighter stuff on it. So when I got the Imanda and the bike weighs in at just barely over 15 pounds, it's like, man, this bike goes. World of a difference, bro. World of a difference. <laughs> you yep. know? Yeah. of a difference and i had a great time i was involved in a crash at Harlem skyscraper luckily i didn't go down um, but i ended up flatting and i still tried to ride for like a few more laps because i was in it 
You were in it. I was in it. And then I came around. Y'all were like, yo, what happened? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I got a flat. Chris was in it. I was yep. like, I got a flat. Uh, but that was a great experience. It was a phenomenal experience. The way the, your adrenaline goes and just the, the whole energy. Yeah. 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 Because so for that being the first race of the day, it was a nice little crowd out there. Yeah, it was. It was. You know, and you usually had, for Cat Fives, like, nobody's there. No. No, and you had like family, maybe. seven more hours of racing. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Word. <laughs> like, Word. It was literally all day. It was yeah. all day. All work shift. Like, you know, yes. was out there for eight of them. So days. we got up at, you were up at like five. Yeah, bro. I was, you know, I was, 5.30. I was, like, I, was saying, I was trying to make sure everything This right. man was calling us. Hey, y'all got to go. Got to go. Y'all ready? Got to go. Gotta, <laughs> yo, got to something to go. You were like, like yo, <laughs> you got time. So I was like, I don't know if I got time. What if the traffic's going to take too long? We're going to get caught in traffic. You know, I, I need to go out there. I need to do like a good, good, good. He was just talking. Super fast. <laughs> Words, huh? I'm like, Chris, if you don't sit your ass <laughs> down and relax, yo, you gonna be fine, man. Oh, shout out to Jenna because she ran. Uh, she bought her bike. She had, she just had her bike. I don't know what. Oh, no, she, 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 she was race? supposed to race. Yeah, she was supposed yeah. to race, but she did not race. But she did the course uh, loop with me a couple of times. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to her because she actually pointed out a few things on some of the corners that I missed, like shaky gravel there. Or like holes or things like that because the course was rough. Yeah, New York yeah. City streets, boy. New York it City was streets. Rough. And when we were riding, man, we had that nice sewage puddle. Yeah, <laughs> that nice, just like you turn uh, into the Joker because it's that toxic sewage puddle. Yeah, they try to clean it up, but you know what it is. Yeah, yeah. By the, it know. dried up by the pros, but for us, yeah. that thing was nice and milky and nasty. <laughs> I was oh. <laughs> it's just so nasty, bro. That one <laughs> corner. Yeah, it's your flop yeah. gets you on your lip, bro, because it's, oh, it's just like on. disgusting, man. It's just it's like, ah. You know what I'm saying? That's part, that's part of it. You got to deal with it. <laughs> Word. Yeah. All right, so we left Harlem. We had a nice little, like, what, month break to kind of, like, really yeah. enjoy the cycling season. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then we went to Chicago. Went to Chicago. We did Intelligentsia. Mm-hmm. People were like, why y'all out here? <laughs> Yeah, word. Y'all racing? Yeah, y'all racing? Yeah, like, nope, we just here nah, covering it. Yeah, and that's a it's that's the interesting part about the sport of Criterion racing is like it doesn't draw the largest of crowds, mm-hmm. and so when you are out there as a spectator, it's almost like why, right? Yeah, and it's like no, I, I love the sport, mm-hmm. and we should be able to travel for it. No different than you know if you want to see a sports team in another. You know, town, go, go. Why? If I want to see Legion race or Best Buddies or, you know, some of the other uh, race teams, then I should be able to travel if I can, you know, get out there. Yeah, if your team is like all the way across the country, shout out to Golden State Bullets. Um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're going, this, another day. Uh, another, yeah, day. another day. Another day. <laughs> Y'all think more of us should travel to these type of events and, and show up in numbers? Because, you know, we make things yeah. fly anyway. Yeah. So. Uh, but intelligence was dope. We, I, I, like I said, it was it's the actual event is eleven days of racing. We call it the last uh, three or four, mm-hmm. um, and it was in Elgin, and then Lake Bluff, and, uh, and then Fulton Illinois, Street, and then yeah, Fulton Street in mm-hmm. Chicago, mm-hmm. Um, and it was all of it was crazy. Uh, we we covered it, and we were interviewing people and going around getting people's um, different thoughts. I just want to say this shout out to um, Malik. Uh, forgot his IG name, but he was cool. He just ran up on us, was like, yo, man, I, I watch out. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's yes. like leak, yes. leak 730 yeah, yeah. or that's, something like that's that. That's my guy yeah. right there. So he was just, he kept it funky. Like, he was just telling us, like, listen, I try to tell my mans and him about different parts of cycling and why they should come out, health benefits. He was like, I just, it just doesn't come across right. But he was like, yo, I, I told him to watch the podcast and you guys explain it, like, on a base level, real simple. And it's easy to understand. And he was like, yeah, now they're starting to understand. He was like, I, and I appreciate y'all for that. Dope. I was like, yo, man, thank you, man. Like, you just, you know what I mean? You made my day real Burr. quick, yeah. bro. Put a little battery in your back, yeah. right? Yeah, that, that was a lot of the love that we've gotten out there was regarding the podcast. Yes, yeah. yes. You know? So, um, shout out to those that tapped us on the shoulder. Those that asked what Black Watts meant. Yes, because I'm going to give you the real answer. <laughs> yes. Yes. You're going to ask. Yes. Watch like I'm in gonna California. Tell. We're like, no, nah, we're not from Cali, baby. Yeah. No, yep. no, no. I mean, but we also saw some amazing bikes. Yeah. Listen. Some amazing bikes. <laughs> there were people that came from Germany, from, yep. from uh, uh, the Netherlands. Like, there were riders that traveled. Yeah. Yeah. It was so interesting to see how people put their bikes together. Yes. You know, like, it was almost as if. 
everyone had this Frankenstein bike. Yes. But it was their little pride, mm-hmm. their little pride and joy. It was like, oh, yeah, I found this crank arm over here. <laughs> oh, and this word. shifter over here. And this word. saddle I had since mm-hmm. I was 17. Right, right. It was just a beauty to see, like, yo, this is my little Frankenstein bike. I love it. I'm racing it. It got me here. Yeah. And there were some people that made some questionable choices on how they put their bike together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, shout out to the old y'all who ride like the 85 and 80 and 90 deep wheels. But on crits, bro, them joints don't don't roll the same way. Yeah, it looked cute. It, they look yeah. mean and vicious. It could, it, cute. it could probably work. It, it just, I just think it was situational. Like yeah. when we were out in Lake Bluff, it just, I don't know what it was about that, that course, the course, but it for was it. not working. If, yeah, it, if you had the, the deep just like 60s or better. It's, it sound beautiful when you skate around the corner like whoosh, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> yes. floating but yeah, yeah, whoosh, yeah whoosh. it sound it's good but you were at the back of the pack yeah, and that was the thing I noticed I was looking at different bikes and understanding their positions and I was like it says something about the course and the rider mm-hmm. yeah. you know like I noticed some folks who had aero bikes just weren't hanging as tough as some of the folks that had endurance bikes who may have stopped at like you know, a 50 or a 60. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or just know. general race bikes. Like yeah. like the Amanda considered to be like a general race bike. Right, yeah. You know? yeah. Or what's the giant one that uh, Bahati rides? The TCR. TCR. Yeah, yeah. Right? He matter of fact, he might have been the only person to win a race on a, deep, a deep dish wheel. It's Bahati. Yeah, it's Bahati. <laughs> it's right. Bahati. Right. Oh, you know, um, other than that, everyone was definitely uh, DNFing yeah. who had deep dishes. Mm-hmm. It just made you think, like, yo, there's more to this sport than the bike. Yes, absolutely. You know, Strategies. absolutely. I mean, little tactics you can see. Yeah. Yo, shout out uh, to Clever. Hey, yo, this guy's always smiling and the just man who never stops smiling. Right. Super happy guy. He's a, actually a really good, really good guy. The whole yeah. Blazers team. Yeah. yeah. Sonny, all of them. Frank, right. all of them. Yep. Rom- yep. Romello, Dante. Mm-hmm. All those guys are, yeah. are, are phenomenal, just humans, and they're fantastic fucking racers. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. But to watch him, to watch him and Frank. Matter of fact, because Frank won. Yeah, uh, he won the last Fulton one. Street. Fulton, yeah, yeah, Fulton Street. So to watch them put their strategy in play, and uh, they just got out in front of a whole. It was like five of them: him, clever, um, Ty from um, from Legion, and they just got out front and just held it the whole time. When he came back around like the last couple of laps, then Frank just jumped out and he's super strong, bro. That's super strong. <laughs> that's Yo, crazy. Wait, man. Can we can we backtrack and talk about Elgin? How there was a minute and fifteen second lead. Oh, and they closed that gap. I never seen anything like that before. Listen, I never saw anything like it that. It was the most insane yeah. thing I've ever seen in the sport of criterium yeah. racing. Wait, there, hold, hold on. You guys need to understand. 75 seconds yeah. when your average speed is like 28 yep. to 30 miles an hour. Depending on the course, it could be higher than that, yeah. To close that gap. To close a 10-second gap is, yeah. <laughs> is insane. Insane. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, so there was a crash that happened. Yeah, they stopped. They stopped. Mm-hmm. And these two, these two gentlemen, one was like 18. No, he was younger than that. 16? Something like that, yeah. The one was 16. Mm-hmm. I don't know how old the other one was, but they had a nice little lead out. Um, I want to say at the time it was like 20 to 30 seconds. Um, and so when they stopped the race, they allowed them to go. Mm-hmm. So can you imagine the rest of the field being stopped and you get 15 seconds or 15 or whatever that is to just go hammer it? Yeah. And everyone has to then build up momentum after cooling off for about 10, 15 minutes to try to jump back on. And it's only like, what was it, like seven laps left? Yeah. So, so the lead the, the, the lead out ballooned. Yo, and I was like, no way. This, no no way. Everybody was saying that. Like, oh, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Like, this two <laughs> that break got win. away. And it, because, by the way, going back to Harlem really quickly, in, in, in the Masters race, there was a guy that got the same thing, right? Like, he got away, like, 15 seconds turned to 25 seconds yeah. turned to 35 seconds. Something like he was just time trialing. Yeah, yeah. You know no, what I mean? he wasn't. It's yeah, guy, yeah and he was just gone. So yeah. to give you perspective, it's very hard for the field to catch him once you get a big gap and there's very little time left in the race. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So go back. Yeah, and so I would say the fourth or fifth lap, 
it let, there was like five laps left. It went down to like 45 seconds. Well, every time, every time they came around, like let's say they, they looped around, they would everybody would be counting, and you could see there's a clock, like in <laughs> yeah. front, and everybody's counting. Like when they go like one, two, three to count what the seconds are, the difference, and every lap it would be like one or two seconds. They would maybe close it. That's just attrition. It would just get smaller, a little bit. But like by the fifth or sixth lap, we were like, know what happened, yo, bro. what is happening? You could feel the energy. Yeah. In the neighborhood, just shift. Everybody was like, "Yo, they gonna do it? They, they might could do it." Everyone just. And by the way, that breakaway group feels it too. Oh yeah, because yeah. you can feel it in the crowd. Oh yep. yeah, you like, can feel it in the yo, crowd. I got, you start thinking it gets in your head. Yeah, bro, I got legitimate chills just thinking about yo. I've never seen anything like this in my entire life happen, and these dudes are literally about to close a gap this large. And you could see, because you could peek through one of the streets, yeah, and there was the a nice side, little yep. chicane, and you could just see, like, okay, I saw those two guys go. Oh, my gosh, there goes Clever. You can see. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, he's going to catch them. Yep. He's really going to catch them. Yo, and by this, they, they still ended up winning, but they had closed the gap, so, like, what, five, ten seconds? Which is insane. No, no, cl- way closer than that. Mm-hmm. It was way closer than at the end. In fact, it came down to everybody was like, oh, oh yeah, like, it's a sprint. The, when you're at the finish line or whatever, everybody piles up along the barricades and slapping the, the walls and all that. It's, it's super exciting. But yeah, yeah, they closed it down. They closed it. Like, it was like, okay, they just crossed the finish line. Clever and everyone else was like, not far back. Yeah. Right. Like, it was close enough to be like, I cannot believe yeah, they, they closed did. this gap. <laughs> if there was... Two more laps, maybe even just a couple of hundred feet. They yeah, might have called them like, yeah, yeah. That close. Do you know what that does to the to the mind of the people that were in the break and the people who just closed? Yeah, because people that were in the break was like, "Yo, did he burn himself? Like, did he burn all of his matches and he's good?" Or you could be like, "Damn, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. What if I didn't have a seventy-five second lead?" Yeah. It was real. It would have got dusted. Yeah. <laughs> it would have got yeah. dusted off. Yeah. And sure. that, that, that would have definitely been a, a confidence destroyer if you had that type of lead and you couldn't hold it. Yes. Yes. And, and you know, like, watching this, you know, we're not pros. Like, you know, we're not even, like, serious bike racers, right? But it's just like any other sport. Like, you can have this appreciation for what's happening in front of you mm-hmm. and how the magnitude of what's happening. You know, right. because like even at Lake Bluff, watching Bahati race in, in the Masters race, yeah. right? Like his breakaway group lapped the field. Yeah. Yeah. That was weird. That was yeah. weird as hell. I, it got to the point where they lapped yeah. the field so bad they had to like slow it down they and almost doubled up. Doubled up. Yeah. Which yeah. is crazy. And I wanted to ask him too. I noticed he starts at the back of the pack. Always. And I wanted I know there's a strategy behind it and I didn't get a chance to ask him. That's that that's that wily veteran type. Listen, yeah. but they have but they have Knows a really, really man. good team, man. Like they have some oh, guys. Yeah. I saw some of the strategy go down too. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, uh methods to winning, they are strong. Yeah, bro. very, very strong. That's that grown man that's strength. That, grown, <laughs> that old man strength. That's right. Bottom line, yo, come out, please. Like if you if you get a chance to Check out a crit, like professional or otherwise. Like you owe it to yourself. You should come check that out. Yeah. She was with us in, in Harlem, and she was just going crazy. Venus and, Venus. Yeah, and jazz, and jazz, jazz. Yeah. yeah, loving it. Like she was getting yeah, the great energy footage, is like. different. I mean, even if you go see your local, right? Your local race yeah. won't have the same profile, but it'll give you an idea of kind of what to expect. Yeah. So that way, if you go to see one of the bigger races, so, so if you're here in the New York, New Jersey area, Harlem skyscraper yeah. yep. is a huge race because. The racers there get points and all that sort of stuff to yeah. crown who the champion would be. So it's an important race. Yeah. In the circuit. Go to your local Criterion races and just stand on a corner. <laughs> yes. And watch them take those corners. And watch them take those corners. You'll be like, oh. And this okay. is the pro men and women. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But yeah. yeah. This is. Yeah. yeah it, yo, honestly, it doesn't even matter what I'm cat you watch. It is still very fast. Yes. At Elgin, the ladies was, I mean, they were taking that corner a I want to say a little more aggressively than the dudes. Man, the guys we talking about careful. Skyler and Kendall what? and how they, what? Taking that. Uh, you want to say, no, the women were definitely taking that corner at uh, at Elgin a lot more aggressive than the men were. Yes. And it was dangerous. Like, to see Kendall damn near be horizontal. <laughs> with the yeah, ground. Sorry, with the ground. Right. Taking that corner. 
is the corner is, came off of a downhill. Yes. And then in the cut, right where you would actually turn, is a gutter. And I mean like the a open one. And a cliff. Yeah. Yeah. And the gutter, other side was a cliff. Cliff. Yeah. And in my mind, I said, yo, somebody's gonna take an L on this. Somebody did. <laughs> and someone definitely took yeah. an L. Never took took it down. The 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 lead out vehicle or motorcycle told the man to get off the ground after his head hitting the curb, which was wild to me. Like gotta clear the track. <laughs> you know, <laughs> do you hear that? Yeah, right. You gotta clear that track. You gotta on, clear bro. the track. I mean, that's his job. You gotta clear the track. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's bad, it's sad, it's, but yeah. You I clear the I track. Hope, yo, that scoop home. him up, scoop yeah. him up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> scoop him up, put him on the side. Out of it. Man, uh, hopefully homie is okay because that looked yeah. really gruesome. Um, but yeah, Chicago was dope. We then hit up SRAM's headquarters. Man, um, that was super dope. Yeah. No, no, well, Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Chicago. Still downtown Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, downtown, yeah, downtown, downtown Chicago. Chicago yeah. Not far from where Fulton Street Race happened. Yeah. Um, and then we took a beautiful trip, three hour trip. This Driving is my- through the countryside. I ain't never been to Indianapolis before. Yo, definitely not driving that way. It was just so damn flat. I was like, yeah. You look up onto the horizon. You're like, yo, where does it end? Yeah, I ain't never seen windmills look like that. Yeah, we passed windmill farms. Yeah, like the, the yeah. Solo, the, yeah, yeah, the windmill farms were crazy. And uh, we got a chance to visit the Zip Factory. That was super. Oh, that dope. was an amazing. Thing. Oh my goodness, just to understand, like, there's a human being behind the wheels. That you're riding on It's just not some like Factory where it's like a robot Putting your spokes oh. together And your hubs together Like no there's a human Makes the precision even more like Damn really like, Yeah man, And Chad this. and Oc, They're not turning this up enough Let me tell you something <laughs> I mean, I don't know what's going on with Zips marketing. We told we gave them some insight and what we think they should probably start trying to do. Yeah. But they hand make these wheels. Like there are actual people that are yeah. molding the carbon. Molding the carbon, they have a, a they have like these pods by hand, and yeah. they mold the carbon by hand. There's a human being behind the wheels that you're riding on, and their QA. I'm pretty sure all of the major brands have really high QA, right? But QA quality assurance. But it's just like to see a human make the wheel. Like I'm a Zip patron for life. Yeah. Like, yo, to the to the degree of. They toss away wheels that have like the smallest of blemishes. Yeah, and we say blemish, like, like imagine if there's a if there's blemishes. a color mark. Yeah. yeah. Like there's like this little black line that goes through the Z and zip. Your like, eye an eyelash got caught in the mold while it was being made. Right. They toss them. Sorry. They, toss them. they just toss it. So <laughs> like literally toss it. Cause I was definitely like, hey, so what y'all? <laughs> <laughs> right here. Are these damaged? Like you can't ride them? Oh, Why yeah, they not there's safe? There's a little mark right there. I was like, I mean, right, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but to, that just goes to show you how much they care about the attention and detail and the yeah. products that you're spending your your hard earned dollars on. Yeah, yeah. You know, like none of the carbon wheels are are necessarily cheap. Yeah, yeah. You know, so like if you're putting your money. Uh, into a wheel set then you want to make sure you're, you're getting the best quality because if you think about it right like the most expensive th- you have your group set that's mm-hmm. expensive the frame and what else your wheels the wheels those are the three highest prices price price points on your bike mm-hmm. and they all and they, and they say look if you're going to make any upgrade on your bike <laughs> the first thing you should do is Upgrade the wheel set. It's just better be perfect. Bro. Yeah, Upgrade they better be perfect. Yeah. Especially, you know, if you're doing 30, 40 down a hill, you know, you, you need a wheel that's going to be, it's going to, you know, make you feel secure. It's going to have the technology so you don't lean over yeah. through, the, through the wind, you know. So Zip zip did it, man. No, they, they, really, they really did do it. I mean, and we, I mean, we're going to have something for you guys on that. But speaking to the engineers... And one of the lead engineers talking about their family of products and how it was designed. And, you know, like, you know, go get that 303S. That 303S, that Zip 303S is is the every person wheel, every man, every woman's wheel. It's like right around a thousand dollars. I don't know what yeah. inflation and what is happening right now, <laughs> but it's somewhere nice. around there. Right. It's made to be durable, ridden every day. Yeah. You know, whether you want to do it with gravel or road, mm-hmm. like that's how it was designed and made. 
One thing I learned being at the Zip Factory is talking about total system efficiency. Yes. We'll talk about that later, yes, but really will. quick is just like the overall efficiency of how you ride your bike. Mm -hmm. You know, like being super efficient, whether it's a gravel ride or a road ride and talking about PSI, you know, how much you're, how much air you're putting in your tires versus wheel depth in hooked versus hookless yeah hooked versus hookless like man it just gave me a completely different purview on like cycling oh so do not put 100 psi in your wheels anymore that those <laughs> days are gone anymore. bad news man those, 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 those days are gone that's yeah, like when you know, just just so just to show you how old that is that's like the rotary phone yeah the <laughs> Nobody knows what that is. Nobody uses it. You ask somebody right. how to use a phone. I do like this. The kids do like this. So that's what I'm saying. Be with the kids. Yeah. No more 100 Be PS. What are you putting in your tires right now? Your road bike. My road bike right now, I'm at 55 PSI. On the front and back? Uh, I probably do 60, 58, 52. Yeah, I'm around this. I'm, I'm, I'm 55 on the front. Mm -hmm. 59, 60 on yeah, the back. Yeah, on the rear. Somewhere right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? 60, 60. Yeah. See? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so, and it matters. Like, we actually spoke to one of our club mates who uh, was using 32 uh, mil, depth, I mean, sorry, uh, with tires. And uh, he was trying to put 120 PSI in them. Sheesh. And he was like, I'm not sure why it's blowing off the rim. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, and we were like, uh, yeah. times have changed, man. Yeah. Like, we don't, we no longer have those alloy rims and, you know, those 23 mil with tires where you run that like so what chad is talking about that total system efficiency the wheels are designed in a way to not just be aero for the shape but also how well it absorbs helps you absorb vibration when you're riding yep right like it's all that stuff over time beats up on your body we were talking about these 30 40 50 mile rides mm -hmm. it matters yep. yeah just being um just that trip when we went to zip at the factory and, and, uh, and learning from those guys uh, Roberts was his name? Yes. Roberts. Uh, Roberts. Yeah. And lead engineer there. I mean, this guy is forgot more about bikes than you know what I mean. Than we will ever know. <laughs> yeah. Like, than we will ever know. Yeah. Son is different, but just being at the factory just gave me a, a a different outlook. Like we learned a lot just in that day, just going there and, and, and just running through that process. Facts. So we learned a lot. But um, yeah, we 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 have that to deliver to you guys. Like, we want to make sure that you guys get all that information as well. So. We'll keep moving forward with this uh word this journey that we on yeah Words, and, oh yeah. and and can we talk about one love real quick yeah <laughs> I know hurry up talking. man nah. yeah I let's talk about, talk about it. <laughs> yo the metro atlanta cycling club mac m-a-c-c -C, holds this annual event in atlanta <clears throat> or just outside of atlanta and it's called one love it's a three or four day cycling event it's this was my first time going and i would say if you enjoy riding your bike, you got to go. You got to go because there's something for everyone. They have whatever your pace is, they got somebody with you. There were like over 1,000, maybe 1,200, 1,300 people there. Dope. I'll be there next year. Yeah. So it was it was absolutely phenomenal. I rode my bike um, consecutive days faster than I've ever ridden my bike before. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so it was, for it. you know, I was, I was, I was training, coming off that Harlem experience, yeah. right? Like I was way more prepared. Mm -hmm. My nutrition was dialed in. My sleep was dialed in. You my hydration COVID, was dialed you know? in. I didn't have COVID, <laughs> so that mattered. I didn't have the role. You know, um, it was a fantastic event though, man. Like the shout out to, to Mac because they really were fantastic hosts. And hostesses. Yeah, shout out to everyone calling Chris Chad. I know y'all yes. was looking for oh me out god, there. Oh my god, I got called Chad so much. <laughs> Yo, please don't call me Chad. Call Chad Chris. Don't call me Chad. <laughs> no, no. But shout out to everybody who at least oh, recognized us, right? Like they recognized the kit. They loved our our kits. Um, you know, and they did ask. They asked about the guys. They weren't able to come. Some family obligations came up at the last minute. But I definitely represented for the crew. Thank you, man. Um, we appreciate you. And uh, it was great. It was great. Just meeting just so many people from Alabama, Arkansas, Tennessee, Missouri, uh, Chicago, like just all over the map. I mean, it was literally like black family reunion. I don't know. I mean, you don't have to be black to be there because there were plenty of people that were not black. It was homecoming. BIPOC, but it was like homecoming. And if yeah. you've never been to an HBCU homecoming, 
you may not understand this, but oh my God, it was great. <laughs> Yo, great. Coach Chris, we got to wrap, so we, we need this Coach Chris moment. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Hold on. What am I supposed to be talking about? Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. <laughs> Let me yes, see. <laughs> hand and foot numbness. So we talked before about um, getting a bike fit, right? So whenever you're riding your bike and you start to feel shoulder pain, neck pain, uh, hip, knee, ankle pain, um, you kind of recognize, okay, maybe something isn't right with how I'm sitting on the bike. But if you start riding and your feet go numb or your hands go numb, you know, you kind of take your hand off and you shake it. Yeah. But really what's happening there is there's an imbalance to what's happening. So if it happens frequently, then something's wrong with your bike fit, right? Either you're too close or you're too far away because you're putting pressure on somewhere mm -hmm. and your body trying to compensate for it. Now, if it doesn't happen frequently and you're just on a long ride or something like that, it could be how your body trying to compensate for something else that's happening. So I know for myself, like, but when I did our, Ak and I did our first 60 mile ride together a few weeks back, man, that was hard because yeah. we hadn't ridden 60 miles almost nonstop in like forever. So I started to get some numbness in my hands and in my feet. And I just had to really focus on my posture because I knew my bike fit was good. I knew his bike fit was good. And once we kind of settled in and made that adjustment, it made a world of difference in terms of not having uh that numbness but definitely if you're feeling numbness in your hands or in your feet please make sure to go to your local bike professional and ask about a bike fit word because so, i'm assuming that your your shoes are the right size right we're too old to be buying shoes that don't fit. i would <laughs> hope so you know um that fit. yo this is a dope episode to come back yeah. from like yeah a lot happened a small hiatus yeah. i would say it was small um, but uh, thank you for tuning in to the More Watch podcast. Sure. I am your, am I a co-host? Yeah, we're know. all hosts. All co-hosts, yeah, right? Hosts. So like, you can find me on IG, Chad Bennett, um, Black Watch Cycling, the website, www.blackwatch.cc. You can buy apparel, you can buy our kit, you can get a membership, I don't care what color or what your favorite team is. Come ride with us. Please come watch this. You know, watch our videos yeah. on, on YouTube. Follow us on IG. All of that uh, good Chris stuff. Chris at Tron Rides on IG. Um, you know, like I would love for you to follow me. That'll be fantastic. But it's more important. <laughs> no, no, but seriously. But it's actually more important that you guys follow Black Watt Cycling. Yeah, we got, uh, we got a lot. All of three things. of us are always there. Yeah, because uh, we really want to continue to demonstrate to our partners because we're trying to leverage. Uh, what we're doing to really give back to the community in a way to help the community build and we feel like we're good stewards Facts. to the community and we got so. a lot a lot coming up so like we said we got clearly this is our, our start to season two so we're gonna have a podcast rolling different events that we're going to with different coverage for you guys yeah um, and a lot more in store so please i mean hit the website up like you said and definitely check out the, the ig black watch cycling yeah, if y'all want the smoke on this bike design, you can come get some of that too. <laughs> I mean, you can come get some on a ride too. You that know, too. I we got, we got say it, all it for but you, I'm you definitely know? gonna start popping a lot more shit. I'm tired of being humble, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. This guy, this guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm stop sure. wearing them shitty ass chamois. I said it. <laughs> yeah, yo, for real. <laughs> Do yourself a favor. Invest in a quality bib. Invest. Black Watch has some quality bibs, but invest in a quality bib just in general. Your life yeah. will change. Yeah, I know you uncomfortable. We know it. Yeah, we know it. Come on, we'll put you on. Yo. Come we'll on. put you. We'll put you on. Come All right, I'm, I'm done. Yo, we I'm, out. I'm we done out. Messing we with out. Man. We out. Hey, I'll Vlad, run the music, Vlad. We out. Run the music, Vlad. We Peace. out. Yeah. Peace. Peace.